I'm very sorry for all the pain I forced the victims and their families to suffer through. I'm very sorry for stealing the lives of your loved ones. I cannot express how much I regret all the decisions I made leading up to my actions on May 14th. I did a terrible thing that day. I shot and killed people because they were black. Looking back now, I can't believe I actually did it. I believed what I read online and acted out of hate. And now I can't take it back, but I wish I could. And I don't want anyone to be inspired by me and what I did. Has the defense had an opportunity to review the pre-sentence investigation, and is there any record you wish to make with regard to that? Uh, Judge, we have had a chance to review the pre-sentence report, and we have no comment on it at, at this point. Is there any further comment the defense wishes to make? No, we are ready for sentencing. All right. I would like to thank you all for being here. And to thank those of you who have shared your thoughts and feelings with the courts, either in writing or in open court here today. It is very meaningful to me, and I believe that it is important for the defendant and the world to hear what you have to say. I am very sorry for your losses and the pain that you feel. I would like to recognize the heroic officers of the Buffalo Police Department who, without hesitation, ran towards the danger of an active shooter call, swiftly and professionally stopping and containing the defendant and putting an end to his evil rampage. Thank you. I have spent a lot of time thinking about this case our community, our nation, how we got here, and where we go from here. It all comes down to character and having the strength to stand up for what is right. Our character is not defined by the good and easy times. It is defined by the hard and challenging times. And often, our character is revealed not necessarily by what we say, but by what we do. I am both immensely proud of and grateful for the way Buffalo has rejected the evil and hate that was inflicted on our community. The character of good people throughout this city, county, state, nation, and even internationally, has shown through as they have stood with the victims of this heinous and cruel act. This indictment speaks to the 13 victims and their families that lost the most, but they are not the only victims. There are thousands that have been traumatized directly and vicariously by this defendant's actions. We have seen the community turn out in support and are seeing signs of much needed change in East Buffalo. It is a testament to the power of love and compassion to overcome evil and hate by turning pain into purpose. But it is just the beginning. We have a long way to go. This hateful act and other similar hateful acts across the country 
motivated by white supremacy and replacement theory are a reckoning for us as a nation. The ugly truth is that our nation was founded and built in part on white supremacy, starting with the treatment of Native Americans by the first European settlers, to the cruel, inhumane, economic engine, nation-building practice of slavery, to indentured servitude, to Jim Crow laws, to government policies creating segregated public housing with communities of color often placed in environmentally hazardous locations, to the manner in which expressways were built, dividing urban neighborhoods to create easy access to government subsidized developments in the suburbs with restricted covenants prohibiting the sale of suburban homes to African Americans, to redlining practices in communities of color, further devaluing those neighborhoods, to the GI Bill, a well-deserved financial boon to our servicemen, unless, of course, you were a serviceman of color to the war on drugs and mass incarceration disproportionately of men of color, to the school to prison pipeline, to inequities in education, employment opportunities, and compensation, to the existence of food deserts and inadequacies in health care. Our history is replete with both individual and systemic discriminatory practices, many of them still firmly in place today. In fact, it is these very policies and practices that contributed to and made this atrocity possible. The effects of these policies, some current and others decades and centuries old, created the segregation in our city and enabled this defendant to research and identify his target to maximize the impact of his evil intent. All of these policies and systems, either sponsored or tolerated by the government and implemented by individuals, were designed to destroy the very fabric of family life, opportunities for success, the creation of generational wealth, and even the mere existence of hope in communities of color. The harsh reality is that white supremacy has been an insidious cancer on our society and nation since its inception and it undermines the notions of a meritocracy and the land of opportunity that we hold so dear. However, white supremacy is not inevitable or unstoppable. It has been carefully cultivated and nurtured by individuals and the government for centuries. This is the history that we have all inherited it has been passed down from generation to generation. We must acknowledge that history. See that history for what it is. Recognize it. And learn from it, or we are doomed to repeat it. Let ours be the generation to put a stop to it. We can do better. We must do better. Our own humanity requires it. As an individual, we must call out injustice in our daily lives when we see it. 
We must reject racism in all of its forms. We must be conscious of the power of our words and actions and the impact they have on those around us, both intended and unintended. We must demand better of our public servants in their efforts to address inequity. And we must embrace government policies aimed at creating and fostering diversity, equity, and inclusion. We must make the outpouring of support, love, and compassion that followed this heinous act an everyday practice. We are stronger together. These are hard and challenging times. Our characters are being tested. The future of our nation is at stake. Are we up to the challenge? I believe that we are. In the words of Poet Laureate Amanda Gorman, there is always light. If only we are brave enough to see it. If only we are brave enough to be it. Mr. Gendron, please stand. There is no place for you or your ignorant, hateful, and evil ideologies in a civilized society. There can be no mercy for you, no understanding, no second chances. The damage you have caused is too great, and the people you have hurt are too valuable to this community. You will never see the light of day as a free man ever again. It is the judgment of this court for your conviction under the first count of the indictment, a domestic act of terrorism motivated by hate in the first degree, an A1 felony, that you be sentenced to life imprisonment without parole. Under the second count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Roberta Drury, a vibrant 32-year-old young woman, a daughter, a dedicated sister, and friend, I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the third count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of 67-year-old Hayward Patterson, a son, father, and friend, known as a faithful, hardworking, generous, well-dressed man, I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the fourth count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of 77-year-old Pearl Young, a daughter, mother, grandmother, and friend, known for being a loving, dedicated substitute teacher, I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the fifth count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of 86-year-old Ruth Whitfield, a daughter, sister, wife, mother, and grandmother, a dedicated caretaker, an avid fisherwoman, and a valued member of her church community. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the sixth count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Celestine Cheney, a daughter, sister, mother, aunt, grandmother and friend, a fighter 
who at 65 had beat cancer and multiple aneurysms, a person who enjoyed life and laughed easily. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the seventh count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Aaron Salter, age 55, a son, brother, husband, and father, a car guy, and a lover of camping, a retired Buffalo police officer, heroic and selfless to the very end. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the eighth count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of 53-year-old Andre McNeil, a son, brother, uncle, father, and fiance, devoted Miami Heat fan, survived by a three-year-old son. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the ninth count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Margus Morrison, age 52, a son, brother, husband, and father. He loved music and sneakers. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the 10th count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of 72-year-old Catherine Massey, Cat, a daughter, sister, aunt, and friend, an activist known for her sincerity, thoughtfulness, and honesty. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. Under the 11th count of the indictment, murder in the first degree, for the murder of Geraldine Talley, age 62, a daughter, mother, and aunt, the life of the party, and a top-notch baker. I am imposing a sentence of life imprisonment without parole. By operation of law, the sentences on counts 2 through 11 must run concurrently with the sentence imposed on the first count. Under the remaining counts of the indictment to which you pled, the law permits me, based on your age, to consider granting you youthful offender status. The purpose of youthful offender status under the law is to prevent the stigmatization of young offenders based on hasty and thoughtless acts and to provide them a fresh start <clears throat> and a renewed opportunity to be a law-abiding productive member of society. However, given the manner in which you methodically planned, researched, conducted recognizance, and executed your hateful crimes, a finding of youthful offender status is not appropriate. There has was nothing hasty or thoughtless about your conduct. There are no mitigating factors to be considered. You will be sentenced as an adult on the remaining counts. Under the 22nd count of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree, for the attempted murder of 20-year-old Zaire Goodman, a beloved son a hard-working young man of character. I am imposing the maximum determinant sentence of 25 years, followed by five years of post-release supervision. I direct this sentence to run consecutively to all other sentences imposed. Under the 23rd count of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree, for the attempted murder of 55-year-old Christopher Braden, a son, father, husband, and friend, 
a professional serving the needs of the good people of the city of Buffalo. I am imposing the maximum determinant sentence of 25 years, followed by five years of post-release supervision. I direct this sentence to run consecutively to all other sentences imposed. Under the 24th count of the indictment, attempted murder in the first degree for the attempted murder of Jennifer Warrington, age 50, daughter, mother, wife, friend, a professional serving the needs of the good people of the city of Buffalo. I am imposing the maximum determinant sentence of 25 years, followed by five years of post-release supervision. I direct this sentence to run consecutively to all other sentences imposed. Under the 25th count of the indictment, criminal possession of a weapon in the second degree, I am imposing the maximum determinant sentence of 15 years followed by five years of post-release supervision. I direct this sentence to run consecutively to all other sentences imposed. I am assessing the mandatory surcharge of $300, the crime victim assistance fee of $25, and a DNA fee of $50. You have 30 days to appeal the sentence of this court. This concludes these proceedings, and the court will stand in recess. That was a very emotional uh, sentencing and victim impact statements uh, being read out there today here for the racist Buffalo mass shooter sentenced uh, just moments ago to life in prison without the possibility of parole there. We watched it all live, raw, and unfiltered. I do want to take you out to the moment to replay one more time uh, the very tense moment of a family member trying to attack uh, the murderer. Let's show this to you right here on Live Now from Fox. We like our kids to go to good schools. We love our kids. We never go in those neighborhoods and take people out. No. 